All right. We are going to get this second part recorded for you guys. Uh, so this is the second part of my channel's message that I am calling World War III. Now, the first part was a very general, very sugar-coated um, timetable of, of the game of Earth as far as the third dimensional matrix collective of the holographic slavery program that is been put on for a very, 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 very long time with and through the Anunnaki. Now, are they the only ones who are facilitating this um, worldwide slavery program on Earth to enslave the souls and the memories and the material that Earth is so abundant in? No, but they are definitely at the forefront of the movement. Now, you have to understand that we're dealing with ninth dimensional beings here. And you're going, hey, I thought the higher you went, the more light you had to be. Well, I wanted you guys to understand a little bit how dark and light works in coherence of energy and stability, okay? So like I said in the first video, it's kind of the idea of a battery operated system versus a electrical system that's just running a current constantly that doesn't need charging, doesn't drain itself. That would be the, the source energy that runs through you, okay? When you get so far detached past the idea of source energy and you move completely away from the idea of God within your own choice, you have to, in order to facilitate a dense uh, reality uh, for the holographic experience, you will need a physical body and a physical body needs an electrical system just like an, a car cannot run without an engine, all right? And that engine cannot run without gas, okay? So it's the same concept of, of beings. Now, how can a being reach the ninth dimensional frequency and not be plugged into source energy and be that close to the light, okay? Very fascinating because you have to understand that, that when they came harvesting gold and silver and diamonds and copper and all of these irons and crystals from Earth, facilitate their atmosphere and generate their own population, they were constantly sustaining this energy as far as a lower dimensional field. Um, and they, when they realized the creation of the divine feminine was the womb of the universe, which was a very, very high level species of, of a consciousness in order to bring forth a soul into a body. They also discovered through the baby's creation of the purity of the pineal gland. Now the pineal gland is what I like to call the alien within you and it is the little seed or nut like type of um, looking thing that is kind of sits in the seat of your of of your brain okay it's like this it's like if you looked at a lamp and there was like a little tiny light bulb in there that would be kind of like the representation of your pineal gland now i'm probably talking to people who have studied the pineal gland forever so i'm just you know giving you a general expression of what i'm talking about here now the cool thing about the pineal gland is it's not technically a solid and it's not technically a crystal it it is completely foreign from any biological compound of the human body itself. It is completely alien, but it is basically the spark of the entire universe, right? And it is when activated, okay? So it's almost like if you took a light and you shook it up and it turned on, okay? That's what happens when your kundalini kind of explodes and your it moves all the way up like a snake and it goes boop, and your pineal gland goes boop and turns on. Well, that phone line is direct connect, okay? And that is, you're basically syncing and downloading very quickly to source energy directly, but it's also feeding and, and energetically supporting you in all of your knowledge, substance, and vitality. And once the pineal gland activates completely, the body begins to produce different types of hormones, supernatural hormones, 
Okay, supernatural adrenaline, supernatural serotonin, supernatural do dopamine, supernatural oxytocin. And then the brain goes onto a higher system, right? So the brain jumps from a very human uh, survival based mechanism into a advanced supercomputer that is learning and it moves into the higher frequencies of gamma okay so now the frequency of the brand brain is running a gamma program so when discovered that the birth of a human child that can contain basically the the genius of 12 star systems in its chakra systems its um, potential to learn, adapt, evolve, and house completely source energy within itself. You can understand how important the human body became after created, which was kind of a glitch because they created the humanoid to be advanced slaves and they kept working through the systems. And when they asked the other star systems to donate for the genetic experience of a human that could learn or become source energy once self-realized everybody was on board for the experiment right because you have to remember that we're here in the universe for the experience so when the human body was created it was the most advanced biological uh, formula in the entire universe and here you are sitting here worrying about yourself right and you are in literally the most advanced bio suit that is the house of God in the universe. It is the one thing that can house God completely in a density spectrum, okay? So when the mother was created, the divine feminine was created through the sacral energy and she had to be a higher level of consciousness she began to see things very clearly. So she was very quickly discriminated against and all powers were taken away from the women. And that's why even in your collective religions, women who are psychic, women who are knowers, women who are seer, seers, they were the ones who were burned at the stake immediately. All right, because they were a threat to the divine masculine rule. Right, because they knew that if this if this woman could bring through life of a soul, she had to be a higher level of consciousness to be able to feel. Because the divine feminine is the imagination, it's the visualization, it's the understanding, it's the putting the pieces together, it's the multitasking, it's the nurturing, it's the housing, it's the understanding part. So that is a very dangerous, very dangerous um slave okay so the women were immediately um discriminated against in the worst possible ways and they be basically became indoctrinated to be taught that they were less than and especially in most of the religious cultures that are real strong in their kind of old school satanic belief structures you'll find they're still degrading women okay so even if you say, oh, that's a holy land, but they treat women like this, you better think twice about what's really going on behind closed doors because anywhere there's negative treatment being made, there is an untapped strength that they're covering up. Just like with the whole um, indoctrination of black versus white, you know, when they created the, the first being in Africa, they had this genetic structure within their body that they didn't lose their muscle mass. They were able to run and sustain heat and adapt to culture and go without water and do all of these things. They were very incredible survivors, okay? And, and it's funny because even in our country for what the last hundred years, Black people have been discriminated against, right? They're considered a minority, just like women were considered a minority. And when you kind of go full spectrum and you look at the so sociopathic behavior of a culture, 
you realize that most of the hidden potential is found in the thing that is being degraded the most. So let's look at the most powerful, influential things that we have on this planet. First and foremost, the human body, the human brain, the pineal gland, which they're always trying to um, you know, calcify and turn off with mind control and symbolism and frequency and vibration. The divine feminine, okay? Um, our, our aboriginal tribes are, are tribes that um, are, have never really bought into the matrix program. They are the ones who are starved and poisoned, okay? Their forests and cultures are burned down. You know, the Pope alone has enough money to feed every human on the planet, and he's technically a puppet for a bigger hierarchy. So you can understand that there is no money issues on these planets, there is no food issues, there is no abundance issues. It is being taken and reserved for the weaker masses that will work without complaining. Okay, so over uh, thousands and thousands of years of, of getting this culture right of huge uproars and wars and battles where people finally did take their power back. They said, you know what? The ultimate abuse is abuse that doesn't know it's being abused. Okay. And this is where, this is where you and, and me have gotten real comfortable. Because over the last, I would say, especially 50 to 70 years, we have moved into access to technology, access to travel, access to abundance of food, access to money, access to beauty, access to um, potential, or at least we thought, okay? Because what makes the perfect player, the perfect slave, is one who does not know that they are enslaved and is happy and grateful to participate in this game where the human consciousness is constantly being utilized to sustain life. Now, how does these beings, these dark seeds, reside in a ninth dimensional collective while being completely in the belief that they are detached from the universe or God? Well, it's the pineal gland fluid, okay? It is the essence of, it is, it is like LSD, cocaine, the secret of life, the holy grail, the, 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 it is the secret sauce that is immortality, is contained in your pineal gland, okay? Now, a typical slave that is indoctrinated into this holographic experience to basically do the busy work to harvest the blood, to harvest the child, to harvest the woman, to harvest the essential metals and crystals and gems on this planet. You don't understand that you might not know that your entire life you have either, either, either been working to support sex trafficking, or you have been working to um, put money in, in the church's uh, pocket, or you have donated your life and energy to a corporation that is funding a war or funding secret agencies and civilizations. Because as above is below, so there is an entire different civilization going on below your collective matrix. And this is what I call the underground world. And the underground world is where a whole other system is unfolding. Different commodities, different people in power, different types of people who want different things. So you want a nice house and nice shoes, right, a nice car to drive, a nice vacation, a nice person to cuddle up with, a, a nice job, a nice little purpose to, to give your life some sort of meaning. And underground, there is uh, a satanic harvest going on that is only in the co commodity 
of intense survival through power. So you fall into a different category between, and when I say you, I'm talking about the masses here, not necessarily you. We fall into these, this, this mass of categories that we are fit in. And when we, when we get a social security number, and this is why we get a social security number, that is put into a system where they generate the health and vitality of the child, the background of the mother, the poverty level, the economic level, the family that they're connected to, the bloodline that they're connected to, um, and, and blah, 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 right? So they know everything about you since the day you're born, your social security number is your serial number, okay? At least in this country. And they know everything about you instantly. And they know everything about your family instantly. And they know what category you fit in. So most people are falling into the category of unconscious um, slaves who literally do not know their inmates. Okay, they do not know their inmates. They do not feel like an inmate. They may feel like they don't have what other people have, but they do not feel like inmates. Although everything that happens in their life feels like a stuck point, a block, you know, a sh uh, of something that is in the way of them really manifesting their desires and their, their goals. And, you know, 90% of the population doesn't even care, doesn't does not want to go out on their own. They do not want to rock the boat. They do not want to piss off the government because the government has been feeding them. So the more of a victim they can create out of their slaves, the more we need this collective matrix, the more we need it for our own survival. And this relationship that has developed over time has become the ultimate narcissist empathic relationship where it's love and nurturing and support and then turn around and just physically, emotionally destroy you and then build you back up and tell you it was for your own good, okay? So that is how they mentally indoctrinate the slaves on this planet to continue the cog of the hamster wheel to keep their world going. So this world on top, is designed to keep the underworld going. Without us, they die. And when I say they die, they lose their essential pineal juice, we'll call it, it's so gross, and they will lose their density. And when that happens, they will return back to source energy. And they won't even get grounded. They won't even get in trouble. Because as source energy or God has created the light, source energy has also created the dark for the ultimate experience and expansion. So everything will be returning back into unity when basically they are starved from the slave within us. Now, they've been preparing for this ascension for a long time because this ascension is happening regardless of whether they want it to happen or not because earth is designed to ascend and deascend. She's designed to open up like a flower and move all the way back into 12th dimension and then contract all the way down into the first dimension. And it's really good for their um, you know, gold and silver and diamond harvests, but it's not so good for their slaves because as the planet begins to become more enlightened and hold more light and become more enlightened, so do its beasts and animals and plants and humans, okay? So they've been planning for our awakening for a really long time to develop a system that would give us a choice to not awaken. They've been working for the last probably thousand years trying to create a comfort zone for you to not know or to you to not choose because you do have free will choice. You do not have to ascend. You can stay in the vibration of the third dimension if you choose. That's how powerful you are. 
with everything happening, you could choose to not go. You could choose to remain in the state of comfort and slavery. Now, they know that fear, first of all, fear is, is really what they feed on, okay? And I'll tell you why in a minute. But fear keeps you addicted to the support and the help of this matrix. The fear in your consciousness, the fear in your karmic spaces of your own darkness that are a vibrational match to the darkness within them keep you plugged in to that system, okay? So the true commodities on this planet are blood, right? because it's essential life, it's the soul, it holds all the essential metals and, and all, everything, and consciousness, and the heart chakra, which is telepathic, and the brain, and the pineal energy, it holds everything, the pineal gland, okay? And another commodity, which you may not have known this before, or maybe you did, but another commodity on this planet for the underworld is emotion, energy in motion. And emotion generates a huge amount of energy, okay? Now, most of you keep it inside, and but a lot of it overflows. Like your anger still drops into the collective. You don't see it dropping into the collective, but you, know, you go to some towns and it just feels more angry. You go to more towns, it feels more loving, right? Because the energy is a commodity. The emotion is a commodity. They use it to, to manipulate the weather systems. They use it to feed the cognitive will of their own desires. They're breathing in that fear, right? Which is a vibrational match to what they are. So it's life, it's essential life. It's just like that movie I told you guys to watch. And I don't remember what class it was, but I told you there's so many classes going on. But that, that, child, that child movie, Monsters, Inc., right? Where they literally utilize the screams and fear of children to facilitate their world, okay? And that is what's happening. So they get you somehow. They either get your physical labor, the job that you're working to facilitate more sex trafficking and more har harvesting of the child and the woman, okay? Um, or they get the adrenal fear in the atmosphere that creates a lower vibrational world because our emotion is vibration and then it's used back into manipulation for us to be influenced by it. If you guys are taking my workshop, Vision Quest, I talked a lot about the power of influence. When you are around someone negative, you become negative if you are not in your own divine power, which is very difficult when everyone you're around is negative, okay? You lose your boundaries in your field and you connect and you become entangled. So every need, and that's why I always talk to you guys about need, want, is. Every need you have is your jail cell to this matrix. I need my job. I need my husband. I need this. I need money. I need time. I need help. And the reason why you need any of those things is because everything down to the school systems, the taxes that you pay in, the science that's in the books, the math that's in the books, the literature that's in the books has all been manipulated to dumb you down away from your intuition, which is why I would never send my children to university, honestly, knowing what I know now. It dumbs you down and moves you into a box of black and white, wrong or right. And because you're learning, you believe that you are educated. So you have a false sense of worth, a false sense of, of um, value, a false sense of confidence, because you're educated. And you've literally been secretly taught away from your intuition and away from your essential knowing you are constantly being removed from your digestive system. You're constantly being removed from your pineal gland. You are being removed for your heart chakra. And you are being thrown into action and survival and sexual aberration. 
because another commodity on this planet is orgasm, okay? Now, I teach a lot about clearing out all your sexual shame and guilt and humiliation through orgasm. I don't have time to go into it now, but if you're taking quantum fitness or vision quest, there's gonna be a whole segment on it because it is that important. The orgasm is the expression of all of your life. It is your masculine and feminine energies coming together to manifest a world within. A child is created. It is, it cleans out the blood immediately having an orgasm. Okay, so the blood becomes purified. Now, in order to make a good slave, when there's so much called freedom around, you have to be running at about 10% of your vitality in order to keep you a good slave, okay? Which means you gotta kind of be sick, you gotta kind of be tired, you gotta be addicted to food that lowers your vibration, you gotta be addicted to people that lower your vibration, and you gotta be addicted to things that lower your vibration. So as soon as you come in, they get you addicted to whatever your limitations or weaknesses are in regards to your social security number, you may not know this power of influence that's around you, but this is what you're born into. Now you're going, hey Jess, I thought you said that we choose our family and we choose this and we choose this. Yes, you're choosing to participate in this game and I'll get to the light workers in a minute, but I'm going through the whole collective process of how this game is set up. Now, because you are multidimensional beings, you, you understand subconsciously more through symbolism and vibration and frequency than you do through physical contact or through language, okay? You, your subconscious is repetitively shown symbolism that is designed to indoctrinate you into a slavery program while keeping you feeling like you're safe and taken care of. And let's go into that for a minute because I know that every single person that's gonna listen to this has experienced this in a relationship. Whether it's a mother, a father, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, an uncle, an aunt, a grandmother, someone has had this experience with you. And this experience is, is the narcissistic empathic relationship. It is the most toxic relationship you've ever been in, and it is the most difficult one to get out of. And you're saying, like, why was I staying in that relationship so long? Because there was an addiction formula present. There was a dark shadow imposing as love. It was false light. So the entire matrix has been designed in false light. Your churches, your leaders, your government, your food, your homes, everything has been designed out of false light, right? You have this much freedom, but, and it's always, have you noticed, for your best interest or for your best protection, and that goes back to the narcissistic relationship. I'm telling you these things because I love you. If you go out in the world, you're gonna get hurt. You're going to get killed. You're going to get abused. I'm the only one who loves you. This is basically what all of the holographic experience of the matrix is, is comfortable slavery. Now I've been talking a lot about this in the vision quest since the beginning of the year about how this is indoctrination is so gentle. And I actually shared this story with my teacher training class today. Another good example is, is the, the idea of the McDonald's organization. And the McDonald's organization was uh, founded through this, this essential slavery program that was now introducing comfort foods, right? And quick, fast foods for the working mother and the working father, right? And, you know, we need two incomes now, and we don't want the women at home because then they might be thinking, and, you know, we want them drugged up because they're depressed, because they are being disconnected and pushed away from their intuition. So these women are pumping out kids, and they're depressed because the man is out doing what he wants to do, and now we're, we're in the, like, the 50s, right? Um, so the story of the McDonald's, and you guys will be finding out a lot about this. It's 
also discussed in rigorous in the coming year is the symbolic symbolism that has been indoctrinating your subconscious mind since the beginning of time. And the reason I choose McDonald's is because we all have probably, unless you are not from this country, you all have a happy memory of McDonald's as a child, at least in the United States. It was the place that mom and dad could afford on their budget. Um, it was fast. It was happy and bright, although it was a freaky clown, right? And look at the colors. Red is the root chakra, and yellow is the color of the, the um, solar plexus, which is the color donated by the Anunnaki, and the red is the color donated by the reptilian. Now, also, you look at the arches. Now, your subconscious mind is kind of like how I see the world as a dyslexic. Your subconscious mind sees everything upside down and everything inside out. And so the McDonald's arches are these big yellow arches, but your subconscious mind sees them upside down. And the inner child within you simplifies everything as a, like a primal or a primitive statement. And so it recognizes the McDonald's arches as a woman's breast. And a woman's breast actually means to a child nurturing and safety. Okay. Now, McDonald's, because of its um, cheapness and worldwide expression, is the number one food chain that buys the meat of the deceased children that are sacrificed on this planet. You can go throw up now, okay? And so we've all probably at some point tasted that, okay? Um, it's still very much happening in Europe. Um, I think that the, the laws in, in the US might be a little bit different, but it's very much still happening. Um, and it's, it's all about creating addicts because if you like the way that tastes, you're gonna crave that. You're gonna ask for more of that. And now it's a vicious cycle of us consuming ourselves. Okay, and this is just regular folk. I haven't even gotten into the light worker story yet. This is just the regular story. And this, again, is such a tiny portion of what is going on, the symbolism of our, our sports, our religions, our churches, our, um, our uh, universities, of our ethnic backgrounds, of our, uh, you know, a legal system has all been designed to have you act a certain way while believing in another idea of what that means. And you can really look at the colors that they use in order to get you into a feeling space, right? So like in our country, the cops are like blues and that's the color of truth, right? And you're like, what? And it's like, if you look at the understanding of how they manipulate you with frequency and sound and vibration and color, which is a vibration, and symbolism, which takes you directly into your subconscious and has you acting out through mind control of recognition of either comfort or safety or fear, you will behave a certain way and think that you are acting out in free will, all right? Now, when I talk about this underworld that's happening, I mean there's a legit underworld, okay? There are train stations that run throughout the entire United States underground all the way from the United States to, or all the way from uh, California to New York with a secret airport underneath, in, uh, um, underneath Denver, which is a main hub because of its access to Yellowstone, which is a main hub, okay? And it's got all kinds of secret travel points in these locations, not to mention in, in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other places. I'm just highlighting a few of them here because I wouldn't have time to literally go through everything. And these underground travel points is basically how the underworld gets around, right? Because it's like there's a whole civilization 
that you know nothing about. And the reason why I'm telling my students stop fo focusing on the Epstein stuff or you know the Tom Hanks thing because they are literally puppets. The ones who are actually in charge of this game, you will never, ever, ever know their name. And about 50% of the ones who are running the control of this planet are off planet or embodied in some other suit, okay? Where they use to walk around the planet. Most of them, the big, big dogs that are running this organization here are not of this world, which means they're off planet vibrating. Okay? So the ones that are doing the dirty work are not the ones you should be going after. Okay? They are part of the um, casualty of war. Okay? It's like, and it's, so, it's sickening because I've worked with so many uh, veterans over the years, and most of them come back so addicted to drugs, so suicidal so lost and so i ask them about their process and they say well basically you know you go in and you're you're considered family and you're treated with high regard but they beat you down into nothingness and they drug you they drug you to get you addicted to drugs so that you will do anything they say you want to run over some children they'll run, you'll run over some children because you want the drugs or you're so crazy obsessed that there's an enemy that's going to hurt your family and children that you'll do whatever it takes to protect your family and children. But I'm gonna tell you that the government and all of the countries are owned by the same energies. We have never been fighting against each other. We have been pretend fighting each, against each other for global power and separation. Because if we feel separate from Germany or we feel separate from the Middle East or we feel separate from China, then we will be in war with them and we will agree to spend all of the tax dollars that we have to go towards funding this fake propaganda. Just like we thought that this whole thing was about drugs, not the drug we thought. The drugs that are created on this planet are used to keep the slaves moving forward, keep us slightly buzzed at all times, keep us slightly addicted at all times, to keep us sediment, to keep us sedative, to keep us um, not caring, to keep us distracted, to keep us hungry. Starvation is one of the things that they use the most on this planet in order to get us to do what we're supposed to do. And I don't mean starvation for food. I mean starvation for your hopes and dreams for a better life, for the right partner, for your kids to be okay, to, you know, to have a vacation. I mean, you've probably thought back in some of your unconscious days, the things that you have done to satisfy an urge, right? Because they know that the human body over time has developed a comfort in this slavery program. And when you incarnate into a body that is comfortable in the slavery program that has been enslaved by the parents who created you, you could be, you know, God himself come into a body and forget who the heck you are. I mean, where do you think Jesus was for 30 years? He had to do some shadow work. He had to disengage from the program within his own body and he had to clear his body out, which is what we're doing in quantum fitness is we're gonna build some new biology. Because even in this house, it is a in-doctrine slave that loves to be enslaved, okay? And it finds its personal value from not feeling like a slave. Mm -hmm. So we've got these underground access points to go to underground worlds, basically. And the money is a joke because it's printed. The commodity has never been dollars. It has always been blood. It has always been fear. It has always been orgasm. It has always been the pineal gland. It has always been the human heart, okay? That's what it is. And because these beings are so detached from source energy, it is in there, just like we have like moon rituals and shaman rituals where we 
celebrate the land and celebrate our, you know, bounty. They do the same things, except it is not the party you want to go to. There's a lot of rituals. There's a lot of celebration around the harvest of the human. Okay. So we are the commodities. Now, obviously, as I said in the last recording, that the Galactic Federation of Light, that when they found out what was going on, were like, oh, shoot, we're part of this. We helped create this. They are way too powerful for us to step in because these darn humans have free will because they're God. They have free will because they're God and they don't want us to help. They don't want to see us. They don't want to work with us. The only ones who will work with us are the Aboriginal cultures or the Indian cultures, the African cultures, the native cultures, the cultures that have never bought into this matrix. They've been working secretly with the Galactic Federation of Light for thousands and thousands of years, working to get this influence and this message in the indoctrination of the children that are being born. And those children that are being born are you. Okay, so not that you were born to an Aboriginal culture, but you had to be born into a environment where you could hide. Okay, so the best place for a star seed to hide is in the slavery programs. Okay, so over thousands of years, the Galactic Federation has been working with these off, um, I would say, the, these non players and you know the i will call them the elites the dark seeds the ones who are working in the cognitive wheel of the earth really don't pay so much attention to these small tribes unless they start to make noise and then they are brutally harvested and there's a genocide somewhere right it's like the message is sent it's so much like the godfather it's like you don't do what we say you don't stay quiet, you don't stay out of our way, right? Because their vibration is too high, they, they just kind of leave them alone because they're not afraid, right? They've been dealing with this, these Anunnaki's and they've been teaching their children about them since the beginning of time. So there's not a huge amount of fear unless there becomes a huge amount of fear and then they're taken out. So that's where the Galactic Federation has been working to get this planet ready, right? laying out the grids, um, the earth keepers, uh, bring, we brought in the whales, we brought in the dolphins, we brought in the big beasts to hold space. We have been getting ready for this ascension because if this ascension would have happened and the slaves, which is the humans, would have been so afraid to give up their power, we would have all just moved back into a stronger, evolved slave right we've given away our power and then therefore the planet as it moves into a higher expression allows multi-dimensional beings to reside here and we would have been a more advanced slave which you can see why they wanted us to go through this ascension as a more advanced slave and be sickened by the energy and be dealing with ascension is issues and dealing with empathy issues and dealing with you know, all kinds of toxicity issues that even though you say you're a light worker, you're on four different medications and you're, you know, you're on the government team, right? So again, you have to understand that where your fear is, is where you're vibrating. Now, I'm not in judgment of anybody that's still playing the game because they didn't hear this conversation. Hopefully after this, you guys will change your mind and start playing on the other side. So, so the star seeds, when they started to arrive, and the only reason that they arrived was because the vibration of the planet was raising to the point where they could sustain life, which means that you as a, a being that came from a higher dimension, right, to help assist Mother Earth in this ascension process and free all of the slaves and basically take away the food source of the darks to help them come back to life. So there's a lot more that we're here to do than just save the world. We're actually here, and this is gonna sound horrible, but we're here to bring our brothers and sisters of the dark back to the light. 
And the way that we do that is through tough love. The way we do that is we fast them. What is one of the fastest way for you to return to your natural blueprint is a fast. So our job is to fast them. Our job is to take their food source away and let them return to source where they can reconcile all of their karma back into the oneness and work through their own redemption, through choice, not through suffering, not because they will be in trouble. There will be no judgment when they return because they will have information and wisdom back at a pure positive conscious place that will help the world expand greatly when we can get them to return home. So they have lost their way. They're an abused child who got so far away from home that they started to hurt themselves and eat themselves and then reproduce and create a whole hierarchy around the consumption and the devouring of human consciousness. Okay? Just like any kid that becomes out of control and turns into a serial killer, right? It is the same exact premise. And we have to stay out of what's wrong and what's right. Yes, it's disgusting for us to hear these scales of what is actually happening on the planet because it's so far from moved from who we are. But you have to remember that you would not even be able to be on this planet if you did not have the remembrance or the karmic awareness of playing on that team at some point and there is karma for you to reconcile if you're on this planet. You could be an ascended master who is the same vibration of Jesus, but if you're on this planet, you got some work to do on your own personal stuff, right? Because what happens is when we move into the dark shadow and we lose our consciousness or we die, a part of us goes back to source energy and, and moves back into reconciliation and a part of us remains in the shadows. So we go into another life and we try to do better and we do a little bit better, but we kill a few people, right? So part of us returns to source energy and part of us remains in that timeline. And then we do it again and we die. And this time we're a little bit better. We just abuse our kids. So part of us goes to source energy, part of us remains. So although we're kind of working back up to the light, we're leaving behind fractals of consciousness within ourselves that is really dark energy. And that's what a lot of you, especially in my classroom, have been meeting in the last couple of weeks is your dark shadows, your past incarnations of when you played for the other side of the team that is who we've come to reconcile and return back to home, okay? So your higher consciousness, yes, is very extremely valuable because it, your consciousness alone, and like I said, it, it's so powerful that it contradicts the matrix of all of the mind control. And this is what I've been saying in Second Sunday is that you have the power within you when you drop into your heart and you begin to feel from a resonance imagination place, not from what you're seeing and hearing, not from your situations, your circumstances, but when you drop in to who you really are and go into the imagination of source energy or the imagination of pure positive potential or the imagination of love, you become invisible. You become untouchable. You become a creator of your reality because right now, most of us are still vibrating creators for their reality. We have been keeping this going, eating their McDonald's, eating this way, eating their sugar that's poisoning us. And we're grateful and we feel abundant, right? And then we hate the way we look, so we go change that and we get into debt and we buy a house that makes us feel more like our higher self that we can't afford. So then we stay in the system and we pay taxes that basically that pays all the people to harvest our own children. And it is a system that has always been perfectly running for the wrong team. Like it, it's a very flawless system, okay? So as the ascension is growing and the consciousness of this planet is moving into higher awareness, we are becoming aware of what has been going on since the beginning of time. So you're going to watch mass consciousness go through extreme, extreme pain because the truth is going to piss you off and then it's going to set you free. And it's going to be, it's, it's going to be rough. Okay. 
it's going to be a very rough ride for humanity because the healing hurts way worse than the wound, right? It's like, it's almost like when you finally decide to get out of that narcissistic relationship, it's the most difficult mind F, um, toxic, terrifying. It's, it's like, it's so hard to leave because it's been completely unsafe, but it's been security. It's been family. It's been connection. It's been ecstasy. It's been passion. It's been purpose. It's been, it's been master minion. It's been victim perpetrator. It's been intoxicating. And for you to walk away from that intoxicating rush that you get from pure survival, not all of you will come. Not all of you will choose that. And I see it all over Facebook. People with big careers in the love and light world, and they're in major fear and disgust over what's happening. And I'm going to tell you that's the wrong frequency because disgust and anger and violence actually feeds the cog. It feeds the mechanism. Emotion feeds the mechanism, guys. Your emotion feeds the mechanism. So even if you work for yourself and you live in a yurt, right, and you've got solar panels and you're eating completely off the land, if you're pissed off about what's going on, you're donating major energy to the sustainability of this dark culture, right? So what your job is, is your job is to get completely delusional about this illusion. Your job is to remember that you are here to create from inside of your imagination. Do not create your reality from what you see outside. And what I mean by this is there is the purity of the seven steps of manifestation that I've been teaching for forever. And it is the pure positive desire from the heart and the imagination of the child, not from what you are lacking in outside of you. If you desire something because you're lacking something outside of you, your desire is tainted through lack. And lack is another word for fear. And your desire will amplify fear and put fear into the collective and become food for these dark seeds. So you have to, pure, you have to purely desire, purely visualize, purely imagine a world, a life, um, yourself and it's hard because you're so indoctrinated to the way the world is that you freak out if you have to wear a mask and you think my freedom is being taken away everything is symbolic everything that is happening right now is designed for you to slowly give up your power because you feel protected right you feel protected oh we're wearing a mask to protect each other no you're wearing a mask so that you can slow down your oxygen levels because you're inhaling H, you're, you're um, inhaling your own toxic waste, basically. So that makes you more tired and more lethargic, which is where they want you to be since your vibration is raising, right? They are spitting into the collective, I can't breathe. Because if you can't breathe, your brain is going to tell you that you're in survival and that you're starving and you don't know you're starving for oxygen. So you'll, you'll, consume drugs, alcohol, food, sex, shopping more because you're starving energy, all right? You will lash out in anger and, and put yourself in a position where they can easily see who is not a sheep. So your anger and your movement is actually just you waving a flag going, hey, I don't believe in what you're saying. And then they're like, okay, well, you're easy to find. I've been teaching my, my collective here, especially my teacher training, is that you're an undercover cop. You're an undercover light worker. Your job is to create your own reality inside of this world. Your job is to send love to hate. Your job is to send love to hate. Your job is to give up fear, which begins to fast the dark seeds so that we can all go home together. Because guess what? We don't go home unless they go home, guys. And we're taking them home through starvation, which means every time you're afraid, which you have been taught 
as one of your human qualities, it's very responsible for you to be worried about your safety. It's very responsible for you to be worried about your loved ones. It's very responsible for you to be worried about your job. That makes you a good citizen. That makes you a good human. It makes you a good provider of adrenal fear that is milked and processed through the atmosphere that feeds an underground world, okay? When you hate yourself, you are the best, you are the best slave in the world, right? When you hate the system, you're the best slave in the world. When you're terrified to leave your job, you're the best slave in the world because you've been taught that your talents, your talents, they're not worth anything. You're not as good as the other people that they are. And if your talents rise to the point where you start to showcase yourself or you get a big following, they will try to recruit you, indoctrinate you, or have you killed, right? And that's one of the reasons why you haven't risen to the top. But when you create your own reality, you become invisible. When you're not producing fear out of your body, you cannot be seen. They can walk right by you. Won't see you, won't hear you. They won't see your social security number. They won't see your little camera on your phone. They won't watch your Facebook account. So all these light workers that are getting shut down constantly on Facebook, they've got to have some fear or anger with the spirit in disguise running through Facebook. And I will tell you, I've only had one thing taken off, two things taken off in the last five years. One was uh, when Trump got into office, I made a quantum expression of why we elected him, but there was a little hesitation in my uploading that video and it went missing. Second one was I when I shared uh, all those doctors talking about how COVID was completely healable and it was removed. And it was because I was like, oh, should I share this? And I was like, oh, I should. And then it was removed because I could be seen, right? So what I've decided to do is I'm going to go big or I'm going home, right? So no fear. My entire job is working on letting go of fear and replacing it with love no matter what. That means if my life ends, that means if the whole planet goes to the shitter, excuse my language, then it's worth it for me not to be afraid because I'm going to starve. I'm going to starve the fear what, that keeps this thing going. Now, um, obviously this has been going on since the beginning of time and the biggest players on the planet that have the most money, most of them are involved. I'm gonna say 95% of our world leaders, 95% you guys of our world leaders and I mean world, I don't mean US, I mean world. 95% of the biggest players who are creating the biggest shifts on this planet are part of this underground society, okay? Because think about the drug of the pineal gland and what it could do for your longevity or your vitality or your immortality or your talent, okay? Because as long as you're on this stuff, on this pineal gland blood that's adrenalized through fear, it feels like you are God, which is part of the things you probably have been working on if you've been going into your Akashic Records, remembering some of your realities where you played for this team and the intoxication that came once you had a hit of this stuff. You're like, oh, I've never done it. You have, trust me. If you're on this planet, you tasted it. You got to know what you're doing if you're going to fight against a war. You got to have some thug in you, okay? And there's been some times where I've gone into Akashic Records and remembered this stuff. And it is like, it's, it's, it's not of this world. And it will make you so high and so powerful, right, that you could, can become a billionaire. You could become a famous person. You could become whatever you wanted to. Now, the cool thing about this is there's another way to have this experience. And this is what I've been teaching on tour for the past two years is becoming supernatural. See, you don't have to consume this stuff to become this stuff. You have it. You have the pineal gland energy. And if you rise your kundalini all the way up and explode this energy, you become that God force energy without the need. You just are. See, they need it. They don't have it sustaining. 
they don't have access to their own energy sources anymore. They're not plugged in, they're battery operated. They need the stuff that we produce naturally. And here we are willingly giving it away, medicating it, toxicating it, right? Um, you know, covering it up, hiding. You know, we hide from, we hide from our off-world friends. We hide from our guides. We hide from our memories because they've indoctrinated and poisoned even the spiritual realm of what could you see? Because a lot of the star seeds that came into the reality incognito were bullied. We were bullied early by these dark seeds. They'd come in our room at night and the, the lights are closed. They would bring their ships through. They would take us in our dream states. And the reason they could do that is because we had parents that were in fear and we were afraid. So here we are, these little sparks of God, incognito as the Christ consciousness, laying in a family's house that's in total fear and poverty probably. And we, because we're influenced, our vibrational match to the human part of that, and then they can access the potential. And most of them try to terrify us in our early first few years. You know, most of the people that I've worked with have had some sort of encounter or or they've completely blocked it out. And the reason why is because if they can get you afraid and move you away from your intuition and your spiritual abilities young, then you will be the perfect harvest because you are the Christ consciousness, which means your potential is a better harvest and that's why there's so much false light in the spiritual world right because they see you with potential and they come and visit you and they scare you out of your clairvoyance and they swear you scare you out of all of your spiritual abilities and then you come to me and say just let me open my spiritual abilities and i'm like you gave those away at two three four five years old because of what you saw you decided it wasn't safe for you to be scared and on earth and scared in the spiritual realm so you close down the spiritual realm and you dove down into logic and analytics and now you're scared of earth. Okay. Hopefully I'm making sense because I really feel like I'm rambling at this point. But because of the commodities, because of everything the way it is, your job on this planet is to give up fear and surrender, which I'm always talking about. I mean, literally fall to your knees and be like, I give all of my fear away. I am no longer willingly supporting this collective i hereby give my life to source energy and follow my hopes and my dreams follow my joy build reality out of my imagination not what i'm seeing around me and stop feeding this fear you cannot go save the children now let me tell you i've had a lot of people ask me questions like why would you know babies come to earth just to be eaten? Well, it's very important to understand that there is no bad or good in the universe and a soul entering a body does not get so attached to the body the way you think. A lot of souls have come in to have these experiences as these children who are being consumed and eaten and sacrificed so they can download the experience to take back to source energy so we know how the hell to stop it it's all been incognito which means there's babies who are like i'll go to earth and i'll live about eight months and then i'll come back and tell source energy like what's going on because it's a reflective expansion process and then source energy without any judgment at all be like okay so let's send in this, let's send this. So it's all a game, you guys, it's all a game. And those babies that get taken and, and used are signing up for that experience, just like you signed up for this experience to do so many different facets of your own journey here, to clear out your own karma, to rescue all of your fractal consciousness still lost in the underworld, to bring your brothers and sisters home back to source energy, to move all the way, to help Earth move all the way back into ascension, to preserve the living library, and to have all of this wisdom under your belt by making it through this process, okay? So it's a huge responsibility that we have. Um, I'm just making sure I'll go back to my notes real quick. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. 
So what can you do, right? You're like, well, I'm, I can't give up my job yet or I can't do this. Okay, that's your choice, right? You did not come to earth to you know, work a shitty job and pay bills and die. So it's all your choice, but you will at some point, hopefully choose yourself. I mean, I know what I'm doing with my teacher training group right now is I am not giving them an opportunity to um, be afraid. I'm giving them every opportunity to become their higher selves and really work with them on, on moving away from what they believe they need to have and what they're capable of, okay? And how to live undercover in the matrix and not be at all in the matrix, become completely invisible, right? So what you can do personally is, is you, and I've been saying this, eyes on your own paper. It's okay to be informed, but you spend hours going down these disgusting rabbit holes. All you're doing is facilitating this growth of this fear and this growth of this anger, which is fear in disguise. Your anger is fear in disguise, guys. Because you are not here to stop that. You are here to starve that. Okay. You think by stopping it is by getting upset and sharing this everywhere. What you're doing is exactly what they want you to do is get really upset by learning about it. Cause and you know, it's funny. A sociopath loves to get found out. I don't know if you know that they love to be discovered at the, at the last minute, they will all testify because there's something really juicy in being able to like speak their truth. If you look at like the, the serial killers that have like come clean, it's like they literally love describing things in detail. So as the ascension is coming out, they're using our knowledge of them against us. They're like, ooh, they're finding out and now they're really terrified. See, they thought this whole planet was run by drugs and more. Now they're realizing there's a much bigger monster and this is just going to create more fear and more anger and more food, right? So by you going into fear and anger and resentment and whatever, disgust, you're just creating more energetic food, okay? Now you say, okay, this is happening. So how can I be the, the change? How can I help rescue my brothers and sisters and find the fractal parts of myself? How can I be the light and become invisible so that I cannot be seen or hurt? right, or used in this, this game, how can I help this process? And what you can do is you can manifest all of your hopes and your dreams. You can satisfy your inner child's every desire. You can help heal ego's wounds of suffering. You can shift into your higher self. You can manifest your own reality by keeping your eyes on your own imagination. Imagination. I imagine my nation. I am magician. You do not have to follow. Some of you are sitting going, what's going to happen to us? Right? And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to you in Second Sunday. You are going to create your own reality or you're going to go down with the ship because this planet, as the ones who are in fear know it, will be completely destroyed. And you will be in the eye of the storm living your best life like nothing happened. It will be that easy. You will become abundant and free during chaos and madness and war. Things will be blowing up. Things could be blowing up at your neighbor's house and you just got a fat check in the mail, right? Your disease just turned around and healed and, you know, your great uncle just passed away. So you're going, oh, but that's sad. Everyone has free will. And we cannot be part of the solution and be part of this problem. So your job is to create your own reality and create the biggest reality that you can. The most amazing life of all abundance that you could harvest. Because you're in the fifth dimension now and manifestation is pretty fast. If you get your focus off of the problems, if you get your focus off the pain, if you dive into your shadows and take responsibility for the darkness that is in your heart, that is in your body, that if you set your own soul free, you will begin to manifest the riches and abundance that you will need to be a global leader when the, all this shit hits the fan, because it's going to get worse. 
for them because they are choosing to participate in it. It could be people you love and you're watching them participate, set them free. A version of them will be on the other side waiting for you in heaven. Do not go into this fear. Allow yourself your own power because no one has ever truly had power over your heart. When you let go of the power of your heart and the power of your intuition, you can be controlled through the mind, through the symbology, through the safety of the narcissistic sociopathic relationship between the hierarchy and the little guy. You will be separated from your brothers and sisters. You will be in judgment of others. You will be in distrust of what's going on. And that keeps you part of the prize. What you can do is you can dive deep into yourself. And the true responsibility of yourself as a light worker is to manifest your own reality and become completely independent and completely remove yourself from codependencies, move into a state of total, total surrender, command your spirit team, command your guidance to return, work through the gut and the heart, stay out of the mind, stay out of the press, stay out of the news, stay out of social media if you have to. Find your creativity of the inner child. If you guys remember, I think it was back in January, I was talking about Second Sunday and I said that the way that what's gonna save the earth is the inner child. And isn't it funny that the thing that's going to save the earth is the inner child is what the biggest commodity of this planet is, is the harvest of the child. The harvest of the child and the inner child is what's going to save this planet. You have to return to that child because he and she knows the way home with completely no judgment and no grudge. Completely forgiving, completely creative, completely pretending, completely in their imagination, completely up for the adventure, completely understands the experience. And the inner child will be led and guided through the higher self and the higher realms. And I will tell you that when this energy reaches critical mass, when enough light workers stop focusing on the problem and start focusing on the solution, we will raise the collective vibration and set the tone for disclosure and for the Galactic Federation of Light to return to the planet and clean house. So your job is not to go and fire up and kill a bunch of pedophiles. Your job is to go in and create your own reality, to create an atmosphere that can sustain a higher dimensional military unit to step down and say, thank you for creating your own reality, guys. Now you've given us enough space and light and there's enough love and peace around us now that we, the higher level love beings, light beings, can come down on the planet and finish this end game style. It's like, you know, you watch these superhero movies and it's like, you know, 12 superheroes save the world, okay? There's some symbology of that. I may not be saving the world, but I am going to hold space and create my own reality and create peace and love and harmony in the most disgusting of times because my frequency down on the ground floor will provide a staircase for a higher dimensional being to be able to walk down and clean house. It will also activate that within me and I will rise back into that status and status and I will be again to help facilitate the changes of this earth. I will become the doctor. I will become the healer. I will become the medicine woman. I will become the global leader and so will you because when everything falls away and Western medicine disappears and the pharmaceutical companies are frozen and medicine, Western medicine and drugs are no longer available. Who are they going to come to? The ones who were woo-woo and mis misfit and conspiracy theorists and, you know, hippies and tree huggers. We're going to be the ones with the real medicine and we're going to be the ones standing when all the chips fall because you will become invincible. War will be happening all around you and you will stand in the glory of all that you are and living a pretty sweet life. Therefore, when everything is time to resurrect from the ashes, 
and humanity that has survived this comes back to the surface, they will need you to help them remember who they are because all of their um, slave drivers, wardens are disappeared and they won't know how to live without it. They won't know how to live without rules and regulations. They won't know how to create their own reality. So some of you are like, well, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Trust me, those coordinates are gonna set in and you're gonna be like, bing, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. That's why I've been saying, make your podcast, do your live videos, build your amazing reality, manifest all the money you possibly can, get the happiest you can in the most suffering of times. It's not irresponsible, it's your job. Because on the other side of this, when this whole thing is over, when we finally meet, a, meet, reach a critical mass of vibration of love where we can allow the higher beings to step down, it will be such a peace that they're here to clean up, not to rebuild the planet. When they help remove everybody, they will return to the higher realms and the ones of us still here will be the new politicians, the doctors, the healers, the teachers. We will be rewriting the textbooks from the Akashic Records. We will download the medicines of the future. We will have the technology. I'm already training quantum doctors, or not me personally, but my team is, okay? We're already getting ready for this fall. What are you doing to get ready to let go of the codependency of the matrix that you're supporting? And that is how I'm going to end this. I will finish this in Second Sunday, Sunday morning, 11, 11 a.m. And the title of Second Sunday is What is Going to Happen to Us? So I'm planting the seeds for all of you to sit in your own truth and your own power and your own wisdom and reconcile what you need to reconcile within yourself. Finally, let go of fear and step into the light where you can become invisible and completely unlimited in your divine power and activate your own pineal gland that is going to be the resurrection of the Christ within you and it will turn on all of your DNA and you will become a superhero, right? So it's all good in the hood. Stick with me, I got your back, I'm holding space. I'm at the forefront of this, incognito, underground, haven't been making a lot of noise, but I'm here doing the work, the big work, just like you are. Thank you for your service, thank you for your light. Time to let go of what no longer serves you and the humanity that you want to create. An egoless society of unity and bliss and joy and freedom and people who truly want to learn what you have to say and, and support what you have to do because they are going to be so grateful for you standing when everything else falls down. So will you be standing and who will you be standing with? All right, that's all I got for tonight. Thank you for part two. I will see you at Second Sunday.